I've made no secrets out of the fact that Death Valley has been a difficult place for me, photographically speaking anyway, and as it turned out, my winter trip at the end of 2021 was no exception. To be totally honest, I nearly scrapped all of the footage from this trip, but instead I figured I'd put it all into one episode and just let the story be what it is. Because the reality of it is, after all, not every photography trip goes perfectly. Hello and welcome to another video. This time I am in Death Valley National Park. Just got in this afternoon. Uh, it rained the whole way in. It stopped for the moment, but the entire valley socked in with clouds. So it's pretty flat. There's, there's no light at all. Which isn't the end of the world. I have a couple ideas that can take advantage of this really soft lighting, uh, soft and flat lighting. So I got a couple things I'm gonna check out that I'm kind of working on right now. At the moment, I've taken one of the side routes uh, off the main road uh, to kind of come check on some of these salt formations. There's plenty of foreground texture, cool things out here. Uh, it's just that, man, you can barely see the mountains uh, over Telescope Peak right now because they're so clouded in. Uh, but it's really dark and foreboding looking. It's actually kind of cool. So one of the things I'm thinking in my head right now is I might go find myself some cool foreground with these uh, salt textures and uh, see if I can take advantage of the really dark and moody uh, image. Conditions hopefully over the next few days will break a little bit. It is forecast to be cloudy or barley cloudy for the next several days. But I don't know if it's going to be rainy. It's starting to sprinkle again right now, but uh, I don't know if that's going to continue on much longer or not. There's been a lot of moisture this last week. I was hoping there would be a little more on the basin floor, like around the salt formations and stuff like that, but not quite. It is, it's definitely not flooded, but I did see some standing water coming in from the south end of the park. It's just that it wasn't over any of the salt textures or any cool foreground that I've seen yet. I got plenty of time to explore, so we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, so I'm gonna keep trekking on here and go see if I can find myself some cool foreground before uh, it gets dark. Well, it is now the next day. Last night, after filming that piece to camera, uh, I went to go scout out some foreground to set up for a shot. And the clouds built in so thick, uh, it, it wasn't even just flat light anymore. It was no light. It was just like dark. I mean, it was 2.33 in the afternoon and it felt like it was after sunset. It was so dark. It rained most of the night, pretty much all night off and on, just wind and rain. So I didn't do any photography yesterday. Now this morning, uh, the storm is breaking a little bit over Telescope Peak. It's really pretty. There's still some really heavy clouds up on much of the valley, uh, but at least now there's like little pieces of the sky that are breaking up and it looks a lot more interesting. But the thing is, this kind of stuff is really difficult to shoot with a large format camera because uh, it's so reactive. It's just almost impossible to set up and, and see, you know, see something and set up in time to shoot it. So I'm keeping in mind that I have more tools. I have the medium format camera and I also have my digital kit with me too. So anything could happen. I'm just staying on my toes to see if, uh, if any opportunities present themselves. In the meantime, it's beautiful just watching the light hit different parts of the, of the mountain peaks. Right now, it looks like right on Telescope Peak is getting some sunlight, so it's beautiful. Nice morning here in Death Valley. It's a little breezy here, so forgive me if there's some wind noise. But as I sat here this morning, just kind of watching the clouds move, decided to go ahead and pull the digital out. So I've got the 5D Mark IV set up on the tripod behind me, as you can see. And I'm set up on an image that this kind of, this definitely plays to the strengths of shooting digital, uh, especially with the lens selection that I have for my, for my digital kit, uh, because this isn't a shot that would be possible on a large format or even the medium format kit. So I got my 7200 lens out and I've actually added my 2X extender. So I'm shooting right at 400 millimeters right now. Just shooting way off in the distance at this scene uh, around Telescope Peak right now. Because the clouds breaking up on it are really pretty. And it's, it's getting a little bright and a little harsh right now. I like to think while I was shooting it, it was pretty okay. But I'm going for a vertical pano on this one. That's something I've done several times in Death Valley. Not sure why that is, probably just because there's huge vista views that are really far away and are hard to get to. And it's hard to react. I can't drive, you know, 70 miles north in time to get this shot. So uh, uh, I tend to just set up on the longest lens I got. I'm shooting vertical pano on this one because it's more data. It's 
more shots. Ended up being about 11 or 12 vertical shots. And then I set up my auto exposure bracketing too. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. But it was automatically bracketing for me a stop plus and minus. So each shot was actually three shots. So like 12 shots, that's 36 shots. It's a lot of data. I shoot wider than I think I needed to so that even though if I only take this much of the frame, when it's all stitched together, I have a lot more so that I can kind of move that around and pick the best framing later. So I can kind of reframe it uh, in post. And then I exposure bracketed it because it's, it's pretty bright over the uh, where the snow caps are on telescope peak. To me, one of the best ways to do that is using the auto exposure uh, bracketing feature in the camera. So it does it, you know, three exposures all in the same framing. It's a lot easier to line up later in post. But that should give me about all the data I could possibly ask for. So I got enough data to probably slow my computer down where I could barely process it. But one of the main things that attracted me to the scene that made me ultimately decide to go ahead and get the camera out uh, was all the layers of light. So there's clouds breaking over the peaks that look really pretty, but then they're, the clouds themselves are casting shadows. So you get these layers going up the mountain face of different uh, quality of light. And it was really kind of cool looking. It's not like soft golden hour daylight anymore. The sun's pretty high in the sky. Uh, but I think it's okay. I think I think it was well worth shooting, uh, especially on digital where it's pretty much free. <laughs> After this, I think the plan is going to be to go scout for some more, you know, foreground and cool compositions that I can shoot with the film cameras. So hang tight on that. One of the things that's been really good for me the last couple of years in Death Valley has been the mud cracks. There's a couple of areas that are fed by a nearby alluvial fan, uh, just kind of washes down all the sediment off of the mountains and it'll flow out across the valley floor and just kind of cover everything in this, you know, thick kind of mud that dries in the sun and then cracks up into tiles. And it's been really super interesting and it's been a really kind of dependable area to find good foreground interest. But this year so far, some of the areas that I've kind of depended on in the past for having good mud cracks look like they've washed out. Uh, at some point in the last year or so, we got some pretty heavy water, it looks like. I don't know all the geology behind what makes, you know, contributes to, you know, this, this mud crack thing phenomena. But I imagine it's probably like, you know, thicker viscous mud that uh, is full of sediment that kind of you know, just like covers across the plain instead of like, this looks like it was probably some just mostly water, less sediment, less, less viscous and more thin. And it just kind of cut through the, the valley floor and left this massive channel in the middle of what used to be a good patch of mud cracks. Kind of just left this rocky gravelly looking thing. It doesn't look very good. So I guess what I'm getting at is, um, uh, my plan A for mud cracks is ruined. Uh, doesn't look good at all this year. The cracks that are out there, if you go far enough out there, there's still some cracks from like previous years, but they don't look as clean and crisp as like new cracks do. The spaces in between the tiles where the cracks and stuff are kind of gets filled in with sediment and like as it rains on it or water flows over it, it kind of wears them down. They don't, they don't look as clean and crisp as, as I would like. So I guess they just kind of took it for granted. It's been so good out there the last couple of years. I just figured it'd always be that way, but no, it's, it's a lot more fleeting than I had, had originally realized. Uh, it's constantly changing landscape out there and some of that's kind of cool because you know of compositions that i shot in the past you know they'll, they'll never be that way ever again so it kind of makes all the things that i've got previously out of this location that much more special because it's just you know they're unique and it'll the conditions will never look like that again so so it's good in that but that leaves me on my toes because that's uh one of the major things that i intended on spending some time on this year is uh no good so i gotta move on and find something else to shoot but it's all good i'll find something else to work on so so much of the trouble and frustration i ran to in this trip was just rooted in my failure to adapt and this one really dealt me a blow it's not the only place in the park where mud cracks exist but it is the only place i was familiar with and had counted on being able to find a composition so without a plan, the best thing I could think to do was to just drive to another part of the park where I thought maybe I could be more productive. The thing is, if you've never been to Death Valley, it's the largest park in the lower 48 states. 
which means that things that don't look that far apart on a map can end up being half-day excursions to get to. And being out of ideas, I soon found myself on one such road, headed towards a part of the park that I had never been to. And while it was fun driving over the mountain pass to get to where I was going, it ate up my whole afternoon, which meant I had no time for photography and I arrived at my destination after dark. So the only thing there was to do was to crawl in for the night. Good morning again. Today is December 25th. It's Christmas Day. So Merry Christmas. Although it probably will be months before you see this. <laughs> so Merry belated Christmas. So it's the next morning uh, and I suppose I should probably catch you up. So yesterday was a little rough uh, for photography anyway. So I shot the one pano in the morning on digital and then I spent the rest of the day kind of getting all my plans ruined. So Mud cracks were kind of my plan A. That was the thing I was going to go to first. Uh, in that area, they're not very good this year. So I had to move on from that. Went on to plan B, uh, which I couldn't get to because of a road closure. Plan C got ruined and I'm on to plan D, which is landing me out in some sand dunes way out in one of the remote areas of the park. And this particular dune field I haven't been to before. So this is new to me. And I got here after dark. So of course I didn't get to see what I was working with until this morning when the sun came up a little bit. So I hiked out here to kind of watch the sun come up and see what I got and just kind of observe. And it was really beautiful watching like the mountains behind me here. All this stuff started to light up really softly and just like delicate colors this morning, like as the sun barely started to come over the mountain ridge to the east. Cause I'm in a valley here. The very first rays of sunlight only hit the very tops of the mountains back here. Um, but now it's later in the morning. It's, you know, probably 20 minutes past that now. So the sun's high enough now, it's hitting the tops of the dunes too. And I walked out here in, when I was in complete shade, you know, in just a ambient dawn light, uh, and it looked completely different. Of course, once you, you got all these textures and sand ripples and stuff that start to catch light when the sun comes up, that it just transforms the landscape. So couldn't have seen this without walking out here and, and spending the morning just watching. There's no way to have predicted that any of this stuff would have looked the way it does. So I'm okay with that. I think my time shooting digital has just it's it gets too easy to chase the light and just run around frantically thinking that you're missing opportunities all the time but shooting large formats really helped me slow down and really appreciate the fact that i don't have to feel pressure to come out here having never been out here before and i have to find a composition and set up and shoot epic shots it's just not realistic and i know that now after after learning large format so yeah but certainly not a bad way to spend a christmas morning i don't think it's beautiful out here. It's absolutely silent. Just a calm breeze. Almost seems like I got a whole valley to myself. I know there's a couple other cars way down, but they're miles away. So, social distancing 2021 champion. donkey in the background there's wild donkeys out here now i'll be honest to the sand dunes historically have not been a very easy subject for me i really struggled with them a little bit now uh, i mean there's been a couple images i've gotten over the years so that i kind of like but nothing i would consider like being like a keeper shot or like any any sort of a portfolio image there's always something just completely missing uh in most cases it's usually the sky and that's kind of what's going on this morning too. I got no sky. You can see behind me, it's completely blank. There's this elusive balance of elements that I think I'm looking for, where I want sky interest and a nice clean ridge line off the stone, you know, that leads up to an epic looking view of some sort. Now, in order to get good light on the dunes, you need direct sunlight, you know, so you have that warm to cool balance on, you know, one side of the sand ridge to the other. But you don't want so much direct sunlight that you get blank blue skies like this. So I hate to say, but I think that shot's going to elude me still, even this year. It's, it's not going to happen today, that's for sure. Maybe later this afternoon, but not counting on it. I don't think the forecast looks very promising. So I have to adjust my expectations. So that means I don't really know for sure if I'm going to come away with anything out of this today. This morning, I'm just kind of walking around and exploring. The unfortunate thing is all the good light is happening right now. And I don't even have... A film camera on me 
which you might notice. And that's because one, I don't have the skies I want. And two, uh, it doesn't do me any good to run around and chase the light, like I was saying earlier. And I think that's okay. You know, this is about exploring. And I don't really feel the pressure to have to go get a heavy camera bag and run out here and try to shoot everything when it's not gonna turn out the way I want it to. So I'm gonna enjoy my time and just kind of walk around and explore. It's kind of chilly this morning too. It's probably, I think it was 30, 32 degrees this morning when I woke up. Some of the sand dunes are frozen. I guess there must have been just enough moisture in the top layers of sand that it froze. So there's like, you can kind of see like a white kind of frosty outline on some of it. It's kind of cool. So when you walk on it, it's hard. But as the sun has been coming up and you walk across the sunlit side, of course, it's been thawed. So your foot sinks in a little. It's kind of interesting. So I've hiked out quite a ways into these dunes now. And then one of these dips, you know, in between the dune crusts, uh, it's actually full of mud cracks, which I find comical because I struck out trying to find those yesterday. And here I come to, to the sand dunes and I find some. These look like they're really old. They've been around for probably quite a while. There's even shrubs growing in between them and stuff, which is cool, uh, but they look really good. There's a lot of sand filled up in between the cracks, which kind of gives it like a light colored in between the tiles, which is kind of inverted from what I'm used to seeing, where you have dark cracks. But the mud tiles themselves are covered in like frost crystals right now that are kind of shimmering in the daylight. And it's really interesting. And I might've even tried to set a film camera up on this if I had one, but I'm not sure I can make that trek with the film camera before the sun gets too high and ruins it, so. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky. So I did go ahead and go get the 4x5. As I sat here kind of studying the, the subject, I decided maybe I did want to try. So now I'm set up on it. And what I've got is just this, this area of mud cracks in between the dip and valley and the sand dunes here. Uh, it's got this beautiful shrub sticking up out of the cracks in one particular spot. I suspect this scene's probably been here probably as long as the shrub has. These cracks look like they're pretty old. Uh, but there's kind of like a texture to them that's really interesting because of that. You know, they're, they're weathered in but they're, they're very prominent cracks, big, wide, thick cracks. So what you get is this green, dark green shrub in the middle of these bright cracks. Now, the sun's really harsh. It, it's high in the sky, and I debated about whether or not I wanted to shoot this photo like that. It probably would look better if it was uh, later in the day or earlier in the morning with some lower light in the sky. It did look pretty good this morning. All of my little frost crystals are gone. They all cooked off in the sun quite a while ago. But I decided it was worth shooting anyway because I thought it was a pretty cool scene. Now, it's not necessarily exactly what I had imagined when I drove out the sand dunes, <laughs> but I'll take it. It's just fine. I like the composition. So part of this is also an experiment. So I shot Provia 100F on this one. I've never really exposed Provia in direct sunlight like this. So I'm kind of curious. I've always kind of reserved the E6 color reversal films for like really subdued shade, colorful scenes. This is kind of the opposite of that. I mean, it's direct sunlight. There's not a lot of color other than just, you know, with the one splash of green. I almost debated about doing color negative or even black and white on this, but I think, uh, I think I wanted to try Provia on this one. So I went ahead and shot that. So I framed this up with my Fujinon 300 millimeter lens. And although I feel like I'm pretty close to my scene, didn't actually end up having to add anything for bellows. Um, my bellows as close as I can measure was pretty close to 300 millimeters. So no bellows adjustment. But I used a bunch of rear tilt on this one to try to balance out the foreground along with the background and try to keep the plane of focus along the ground. But I don't expect to get this exactly pin sharp everywhere. I think that's just too much of a technical challenge for being set up the way I am. And I would have maybe backed off a little bit and tried to include more of the, of the foreground and not shot quite as tight, but there are some sticks and kind of distractions poking up out of these mud cracks and I wanted to disinclude those. Being that it's in direct sunlight, uh, I do have a shadow cast from the 
for the shrub, which I think was kind of cool. It was really, really long and pointed all the way out the end of the composition when the sun was lower, when I was scouting this out earlier. And I don't think I really liked that. So I actually like the shadow, its own shadow that it's casting. That placement's a little better now with the sun high. So my exposure times on this were one eighth of a second at F45. It's that bright out here, which was kind of nice. Made it really easy to focus on the ground glass. Everything's really bright. <laughs> Uh, but then the second sheet, I was still kind of debating on how bright I want this foreground to look. So the second shot, I actually bracketed down one stop. So I went at one over 15 at 45. We'll see if my decision to shoot this with harsh sunlight was a good one or not. I'm not sure, but I think the subject and the composition was strong enough to try. I may be disappointed in that, I'm not sure. But uh, it sure is nice to have at least one shot in the bag. Hopefully it turns out. So I think that's it. That's the only composition I've seen so far out of this location. I could wander on some more and explore and try to find some more dune stuff. But honestly, the light's really harsh now and it's hard. I find it really difficult to scout for compositions uh, in harsh sunlight because it doesn't look like it would when you're gonna shoot it. The sky is completely blank, blue sky. So it's really uninspiring. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if I wanna hang out here or if I wanna just get out of here and go find another location. I think I'm gonna make my mind up as I'm walking back. Those were the only two exposures I took in that location. And as it were, that was the only time I would get the film camera out for the entire trip. The two exposures on Provia turned out just fine. Although it was the second exposure I won over 15 and ended up using. As the first exposure was a little brighter than I would have liked. Sharpness is good, and I think the center weighted composition is just fine. Since the foreground cracks add a lot of interest to help draw your eye. Certainly not the assortment of images I had hoped to come home with from this trip, but I was glad to have put something through the film camera at least. And it might have been just fine with those had it not been for the photo I shot on the digital camera while I was scouting the scene earlier. I had captured the frost crystals while they were still present, and the overall quality of the lower angle of lights was just much more pleasing. Aside from the shadow cast leaving the frame, as I mentioned earlier, I was much more happy with the digital image, simply because it was a better moment in time. My decision to lead the area turned out to be well-timed, since without cell service, I was unaware that the mountain pass on my route to get out of there was in the crosshairs of another snowstorm. The existing snow was already tracked, and it wasn't terribly deep, but that may have changed had I decided to stick around with the sand dunes and shoot sunrise the next morning. In fact, even after seeing the forecast, I had no idea the kind of conditions I was about to experience. I made my way out of the western side of the park, and after a quick stop to air my tires back up, decided to drop down into the eastern Sierras. It was part of my original plan to visit this area much later towards the end of the trip, but considering how things had gone up to this point, I thought I'd shake off Death Valley and go try my luck at the Alabama Hills. I arrived a little too late to shoot sunset and only managed to get one scouting photo as the sun was going down. And that's when the wind started. Both the Eastern Sierras and Death Valley experienced 50 mile an hour wind gusts that night and the following morning. It occurred to me to get a hotel and just try to shelter in place, but everything was booked. So I drove back into the park looking for anywhere I could go to get away from the wind. I ended up driving and driving and driving and eventually drove all the way home. Not every photography trip ends in success, but thanks as always for watching anyway, or watching me try.